Cafe Stir It Up with Matt, Landon, and Justin. Get ready to stir it up. It is round 24. I hope your Thursday is looking bright, shiny, and oh, so cool because it is hot as the devil where we are. Hot as the devil. We're never going to be satisfied with the temperature. It doesn't matter. It's I don't. Too hot I don't want to be satisfied. Too cold. When you're satisfied, mm-hmm. you're sublime, baby. You're garbage. <laughs> you need to get ready, get pumped, get more. Well, Matt's back, everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Suck it. I hope you wanted it. Welcome <laughs> back. Back with a vengeance. Uh, it was a little cool down. I had to. I had to take myself off the mark. And let me tell you. Let me tell you guys something. Uh-oh. He's got some things to Just say. Just to let you know, this oh. is Matt, and this is Justin. And uh, I'm Landon. That's right. No, no special intro for you. Because let me tell no, you something. No. no, I don't have any bad comments. You guys did a great job. <laughs> I just want to say, has anyone chugged a lawn and went through all the Mystery Science Theater? This guy. Two you thumbs. Did it. Oh, I have watched it. It has a story. Nice. The little right. bumps and, and intros have a story. you had to finish story. the story arc. I had to finish the story arc, which was unsatisfying. <laughs> but the last movie they have on there is so god-awful. It is unbearable to watch. Even with them it is unbe- cracking wise? George Mc- or, you know, Troy McClure, and you just, it, it's almost unbearable. <laughs> it's almost unbearable. But, the, but the, 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 you know, the comments are great. It's just, ugh. And, Worse than Avalanche, because that one was oh, pretty bad. no, it's bad. It's not like slow like Avalanche. It's just, what is that? Do not, I'll tell you this, do not pay attention to what happened in that movie. Okay. Just listen to the jokes and move along. Sounds good. I can do that. And my second item is... Yep. I would definitely wear that virtual reality suit. Yeah, I, would, I figured you I would. I would wear it, but I had an application for it. If if you could get some kind of robot to be you, think of people like um, paraplegics and stuff like that that can't do anything, and if you can move it off their brain, then they have a body to function. They can take care of themselves. Well, you're talking about, are you talking about literally uploading the consciousness to the robot? No, 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 not uploading the consciousness, just being able to control it like a virtual oh. reality. And oh, here I see myself. I yep. need to bathe myself. Dunk, dunk. You know? <laughs> dunk, dunk. <laughs> and it would so be you're exactly controlling your robot, moving your, moving your body around? Moving your body around so you could be your That's own wheelchair. That's really weird. That's awesome. It's kind of like, um, it's like, it's almost like you would be an embodiment of Bender's head. Like his exactly. head gets knocked off and you yeah. can control his body. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the you, know, you like I was, that? I was trying to think. Uh, Stephen Hawking. Hawking, yeah. You know how great it would be if he's like, I have a body again. Time to womanize. I mean, he would be so happy. <laughs> and we all know Stevie Hawkins is a uh, giant poon hound. <laughs> hey, hey, have you seen that that movie? They leave a lot out of his marriage. They went downhill. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they call his wheelchair the shagging wagon. <laughs> oh, absolutely. God. That's why he's got those. That's why he's got those spinners on it. <laughs> He's like, Hello, check me out, baby, baby. He drives the ladies mad with his brain. His, his brain. Gi- I, I should have done better build up there. His giant brain. His enormous brain. <laughs> there you go. Green Your timing is impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, I've made my uh, grievances. and uh, Those weren't really grievances. No, no. I just wanted to throw those in there. I was like excited when I was listening. I was like, man. I want to say stuff. No one can hear me. <laughs> for, I will say, though, for fans of boobs, there are no boobs on this episode. There are no, but like he said, more balls. So, well, moving along. Other than the boobs that are, you know, regular. There are here. three Plus, boobs talking into microphones. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <Yes>. Giant boobs. <laughs> and uh, as we're talking about boobs and balls, let me throw the ball to uh, this comic corner over here. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, for Comic Book Corner. Oh, my God. Too big. Too big. <laughs> Too big. <laughs> I went. <laughs> he went straight up Wizard of Oz with that shit. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I'm leaving it in because his I eyes got myself. so big when he did it, like he surprised himself. Ooh. Landed. Wow. <laughs> go big or go home. <laughs> Is that what's happening? <laughs> That's what's up. Evidently. Um. Yeah. So welcome in. Uh, <laughs> if you weren't awake before, you're awake now. And That's right. this week. I have something very special. Uh, first of all, Landon's going to help me out because we're going to catch up on a little bit of Secret Empire. But before we get there, my recommendation of the week is a special event, which is Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe again. Again. Number one. Now, the first thing I want to say about this comic is I've noticed that Marvel has changed their parental advisory tag on the front. Of, Uh-oh. So it used to just be... Parental advisory, like in a black, white, and red kind of a sticker, yeah. and it said parental advisory, and it said like um, mature content or something. Now 
it says not underlined for kids. And I've noticed that it's like this on the Jessica, on the Jessica Jones comic and a couple huh. of, they've changed it. And it must be that people didn't understand uh, what parental say, advisory meant. I guess people have been buying it for <laughs> their kids. Well, Jessica Jones, that seems like a nice clean comic. Here you go, seven year old. Yeah. Yeah, we watched the Netflix show. It's it's obviously okay for the That's children. It's okay. I'm, 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 I'm dry hunching, but I mean, you know, beyond that, it's totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's kind of bizarre that they did that, but I guess it, it wasn't plain enough for people to understand what parental advisory meant. So now there you go. If you were curious, it means not for kids. Are you curious? So I picked this up for my son, and uh, now, <laughs> <laughs> this is what he wanted. Yeah. Um, no, so I don't know. Like I I don't know if there was a Deadpool kills the Marvel universe before. It seems I, like a, he's killed the Marvel universe several times in, in my yeah. memory, but I don't know for sure. <laughs> Okay. I mean, uh, Marvel Marvel in the past has done like uh, Punisher kills the Marvel Universe here recently. Oh, They've done okay. Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe. Deadpool uh, illustrated where he goes through history and kills like, for example, <laughs> Huck Finn or Moby Dick. <laughs> These are books <laughs> I, I'm interested in. <laughs> that That's a fun good, series. Actually. So I'm, I'm always interested whenever Marvel does a blank kills or goes after something universe. So. Well, as you can imagine, when you, when you get into a Deadpool – some sort of a Deadpool um, media, whether it be comic, movie, TV, whatever it is, there's going to be violence and gore, and there's plenty of that in this comic. And gore galore. He starts out, and he's actually fighting alongside um, a, a team that consists of Rogue, Synapse, and Doctor Voodoo. Okay. And they're taking mm. they're taking down some baddies, um, and Quicksilver's there too. Uh, but uh, very quickly. S- Modoc gets inside of Deadpool's head. Uh oh! And it doesn't make it really plain like in the in the first like when it first happens. It just makes it like kind of Deadpool's kind of gone to sleep. But uh, he wakes up um, and starts fighting again. He thinks he clears the room, and then it starts showing things from his point of view, <laughs> and everything has turned into like a children's comic. Yep. It's real, like, mm. yeah, everything that he's seeing is very, like, Saturday morning comic-y or something. That's like, it, it's almost hard to describe the kind of art change. Because at first, it's it's kind of dark and gritty. Yeah. Um, and, and, and real detailed. Like, you can see through the Deadpool eyes, you can see, like, his scarred skin yeah. and his eyeballs and stuff like that. What was the one? Oh, the banana splits one yeah. is kind of like what that one is. Oh, yeah. The, the art, yeah, it changes yeah. kind of like the banana splits. <laughs> Yeah, um, but he does not decide to uh, go straight out of Compton and start rapping or anything like that. <laughs> but and with Deadpool, you never know if he's going to lay down a fat beat. So he that's could. Surprising. He could mm-hmm. straight out yeah. of costume. <laughs> but he starts. <laughs> so as he kind of comes to, or he feels like he's coming to, he still thinks he's fighting with the X Men, the mm-hmm. team that he's fighting with. And now the enemies are hands off, cowgirl, snarky raptor cheetah. <laughs> Dr. Voodoo Doll <laughs> and Brainwave Ninja. And um, so he starts killing those dudes because obviously they're a serious threat to his friends. Um, and it kind of snaps out of it and shows a room just of decapitated heads and blood and. Whoopsie. Yeah, all oh. kinds of stuff. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yep. So basically. Definitely not for the kids. Modoc has gotten into Deadpool, is using him as a puppet, and is taken down. Um, all of the good guys. Um, flash forward, the next time we see Deadpool, he's at the Aegean Sea, and he's taking on Valkyrie, Hercules, 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 Hercules. you smell um, special, boy. And we're all clapping. Yeah, that's right. Loki, Small claps. Yeah, Loki's there, um, Thor, Hippolyta, and Ganesha is there, and, and he's um, he thinks he's going to play a game of beach volleyball with them, but... <laughs> That is not what is going on in reality. <laughs> no volleyball? Yeah. Mm. So, anyway, there's a team that kind of get, gets the um, gets wind of what's going on with Deadpool, and they understand that he is probably under thrall, and, and he's not thinking for himself. So they want to help him, but uh, Punisher, his idea is, right now he's a threat, I'm going to take him out. That's, so. that's typical Punisher. <laughs> That's Punisher's solution to everything. <laughs> Toaster's not working. Dead. Yep. Time to take it out. <laughs> Time to take it out. <laughs> it's going to go off extra warranty. <laughs> right. It's a terrible one-liner. I'm a, I'm a really bad Punisher. <laughs> I'm going to have to burn it now. <laughs> I, I, like, I like the one-liners. 
but uh, but that's kind of where this uh, this comic puts us. That's that's the world it sets up, and um, it looks like it's going to be pretty fun. Deadpool is freaking unstoppable at this point. I don't want to I don't want to spoil how he takes on the gods at the Aegean oh, Sea, but uh, oh, but he does take on the gods. But he does, and he survives. Holy so. crap! I mean, he's a he's a powerful mutant. I guess is the, the best word for it. He's ruthless too. By he's any a mutant, means right? necessary. Not an inhuman. He's a mutant. Okay. Yeah. He is a mutant. Yep. So, anyway, go check that one out. That's my recommendation this week. If you're a fan of Deadpool, I think that you'd get a few giggles out of this. A few ganders. Very cool. Inappropriate, <laughs> not for kids <laughs> yeah. comic. That may, it may be because of that that kitty type middle that but i'm saying it's because that's just the part i would show my parents if i would want <laughs> oh yeah look at this They're like well, he's fighting a stuffed animal yeah he's fighting stuff animal. that was cool uh, <laughs> but i'm saying that that sticker's not just on uh the deadpool comic they've changed it to mm. all of the inappropriate comics now have it that says not for kids so i, don't know. I wonder I'm, if they did have to make it that much more blatant like you said because people just didn't understand what mature content meant yeah, but it's like you don't that it doesn't really surprise me with deadpool because for whatever reason Deadpool is massively popular with small children, even though Deadpool is not appropriate for smaller children at all. Who knows, man? Uh, maybe it's the maybe they're getting so much, you know. Uh, uh, I guess they're getting out there so much that more kids are seeing them, you know, with all the new movies and Spider Man and and everything mm-hmm. coming out there. You know, kids are like, oh, I really want to watch superheroes. Oh, I want comics. You know, they're trying to be like, okay, here's what you can buy them. Here's what you can buy yeah. them, kind of thing. I think. I mean, it's like uh, talking on on Deadpool. It's like I remember going to see that movie opening night, and there was there was a couple with their kid, little girl who couldn't be more than four years old, decked out in a Deadpool hat, Deadpool shirt, Deadpool shorts. Like kids love Deadpool, even though he is a very mature character. Yeah, and and I was actually gonna kind of hit on exactly what you're saying. Deadpool merchandise is everywhere. Oh yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. And oh, and yes. kids think it's pretty cool to rock the Deadpool merchandise. Even mm-hmm. before that movie, it was Yeah, it was everywhere. out there. It was out there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's and it's even more so now, but yeah, it mm-hmm. was out there before. And so, and I think kids have always looked at it as that's a that's a cool character cuz he he's a killer, he's a murderer, he's awesome, yeah. you know, and and he's and, a and jokester. He is fun. <laughs> and yeah. he's fun. He is fun and funny. He's, he's uh, of, of course, they've probably seen it if they know anything about it. Or read the, I mean, even the comics, you know, he's that embodiment of the is snarky, mm-hmm. you know, fastest man in the room. Not smartest necessarily, but definitely fastest. Mm, so, yeah. so I, I, I think that I think it's kind of the whole Camel Joe effect. Oh, true. That's a l- true. A little bit. Yeah, I could see that. Kids, kids think he's a cool icon to to <laughs> like represent. And so that's drawing them to it, and people are so Marvel's like, we better at least let parents know if they don't know that this is mature content. So yeah, just FYI, this is uh, out of the covering your ass territory. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> maybe they should just have a, a watermark that says CYA across the front, and <laughs> exactly. like, oh, this is a CYA comic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's my recommendation. So we can go. Let's go and take a venture into the dark, dirty world that is the Secret <laughs> Empire. Oh, goodness. Yes, uh, I'm catching up on 4 and 5, and uh, like Jay said, this is still a very dark and gritty universe. Um, I still like what's going on. I spoke with the guy uh, at the new comic shop I'm going to. Sorry, Richard, I'm not cheating on you. I'm just not <laughs> driving three hours for comics. And he was talking about how he likes what this story is doing, and it's at least interesting. And 4 and 5 uh, follow that same path. 4 focuses more on the two teams. Uh, well, it focuses on Cap's Avengers. They still call themselves Avengers. And then it focuses on the Resistance, led by Iron Man is an AI and... Uh, trying to remember who else is in it and uh, ant-man is in it and in issue four they're trying to collect enough of the uh shards of the cosmic cube enough to where they can control the power of the cosmic cube because right now that's that's the MacGuffin that everybody's going after in the secret empire storyline because everybody thinks if they get the if they get the cosmic cube they can fix whatever's wrong with this with this reality so both Cap's Avengers are going after him, and then uh, the Resistance is going after him. They find out that one of the shards is being controlled in Alaska by Ultron Hank Pym, the the Ultron Hank Pym hybrid. And uh, Ultron uh, has a deal with Hydra. They've pretty much given him all of Alaska, and he's slowly (laughs) building up an army. Think of uh, think of Alaska full of Ultrons, and they're just waiting. They're waiting for the word exterminate. 
not to borrow from Doctor Who. I was about but, to say, hold on a minute. Exterminate. <laughs> they're not Daleks, so, but they're just Ultrons, so it might be worse. Um, so uh, both Caps Avengers and the Resistance, they converge into Alaska, and they're trying to be all super sneaky, but it's really hard to sneak up on an AI like Ultron. So Hank Pym, Ultron knows they're coming a mile away. So he captures everybody uh, that shows up on both sides and they regain consciousness around the dinner table at Avengers Manor because <laughs> Hank Pym, Ultron has recreated uh, Avengers Manor. And he's talking like, I don't recognize any of you people like, like mm. on both sides of the aisle. And Tony Stark doubles down and is like, uh, you know that one taboo thing with Hank Pym that Marvel didn't really like to talk about how he uh, put hands on uh, the Wasp when they were married? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Tony Stark totally calls him on that. Uh, just boom, Ooh. right there uh, in the comic in front of God and everybody. So that was, that was a little <laughs> surprising that, uh, that they threw that card out there. And it looks like hmm. Ultron's about to straight up kill Tony Stark, but the voice of reason is Ant-Man. Which, which I'm kind of surprised, but if you think about it, uh, Scott Lang and Hank Pym, both in the comic and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they have history. So I guess it makes sense that in this situation, the jokey Ant-Man is the one that saves the day, or at least diffuses that situation. So I thought that was cool. Uh, that's mm -hmm. issue four. Uh, issue five. Oh, I do want to mention at the very end of four, uh, Namor takes a knee to Cap and and, and is and is pretty much seceding uh that Cap has control over him and Atlantis and also the shard of the cosmic cube that they had. So, oh, my goodness. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. Things are happening in uh, issue four. And then issue five uh, focuses more on uh, on the Red Room, the team being led by Black Widow of the young superheroes who, in their mind, the only way they can fix Hydra Cap or S Evil Steve or Steve as Steve 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 yeah, I like that is uh, is to kill him. So they focus a little bit on that. And then in the back half of the issue, you remember how I was talking about like Caps Avengers and stuff like that, how he still has a team of Avengers, even though he's Hydra. Yeah. I've been like ever, ever since uh, Secret Empire started, I've been curious. It's like, why is Thor, even though he doesn't have the hammer, he's still a good guy. Why is <laughs> Thor, you know, siding with Cap? Why is why is the Vision siding with Hydra and Cap? Why is the Scarlet Witch doing the same? We kind of get an inside look on the team and why these players are playing for the team they are. Hmm. Uh, so I like that aspect. And on the cover, uh, it shows the heroes like pinned down, beaten to death, with Hawkeye looking scared out of his mind, pointing an arrow at somebody or, somebody coming at him from off screen. And it is a Big reveal at the end of issue five, who Captain America calls, quote, his secret weapon. Uh, hmm. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to give away the reveal on uh, at the end of five. But this is now the second in three, uh, three of the secret empires where at the very last page, there's a big, oh, my God's reveal moment. And I was talking with Andrew on Twitter, who's been, excuse me, reading up on secret empire. And I said to him, it's like it was a great like big reveal but i'm a little afraid that if marvel keeps you know every other comic we have this big oh my god's moment i'm afraid <laughs> we're going to get a little bit of fatigue because right now it's yeah. like i'll go ahead and, sp and tell you like three three's been out for a while punisher shows up punisher is full-blown hydra and he is 100 percent behind cap nice. uh, this this reveal in five i mean if you look at the cover you can kind of be like Oh yeah, I totally should have seen this coming. And especially, I mean, the cover. If you've been paying attention to comics recently, especially uh, going back to Civil War II, it should kind of give you a tip of the cap. But it's it was a very like big moment. But it's, uh, I'm enjoying it. But at the same time, like I said, I am a little afraid that Marvel's going to just you know wear us out with these big reveals. I can see that. I mean, you need like a, a couple, you know, a couple of them that are like calm and you're just like where are they going where are they going to do with this you know mm -hmm. where things seem like they've settled and you're like i don't know what they're going to do because you know the, the 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 omg moments there you know what's going to happen they're going to have to address them so it's like you know that whole next comic at least a quarter of it's going to be about that so oh, yeah, yeah yeah like issue six i have I, I imagine like you said at least the first quarter of it is going to be nothing but cap and this character that's revealed that's going to be that's going to be the opening salvo for issue six so <clears throat> I just wanted to complain for a second because when I picked up another one of my comics this week, I noticed it had a strange emblem and a weird title on the front. And uh, oh, yeah. so Landon, you're getting your 
secret empire in my X Men gold. So thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry about that. That is uh, one of the side effects of Marvel's big giant crossovers, where every where every book is affected. Yeah. So things connected. Yep. So it's a little aggravating. So I, uh, X- I understand that. X Men Gold number seven is tied into the Secret Empire. I actually haven't read this one yet. I'm I'm a little behind. I've got a I've got a few that I need to is, catch up on. But is Gold the has two different X Men? Sets or is that blue? Well, they've well they've split. So blue is the one from the past, and gold. Is oh, okay, the, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. I knew we I knew we had them in the same book there for a minute, and yeah. I, and, and I was trying to. I'm confused <laughs> to which is which. Yeah, they they mm-hmm. split that makes them sense off. though. That's in. That makes sense. But yeah, I think that I think the intent is that it's going to be crossing over with several books over the next few weeks. So this is well, that's the, not that surprising. Because I mean, like. Again, it's like this is Marvel's big giant crossover where they want you to pay attention to Secret Empire. So if you're just a reader of X-Men Gold, you're like, you notice what's up with this weird title and this weird logo. Oh, well, if I really want to know what's going on, I got to go pick up Secret Empire Zero through Five. Yeah. Don't forget Zero. Don't forget Zero. Good Lord, don't forget Zero. Yeah. Don't be some ding-dongs and just assume it starts at one. (laughs) Yeah. There's a point oh oh one there. I actually, well, what happened to me was I almost didn't pick this one up because I didn't recognize it as X-Men Gold. You know, it had the weird, I saw the Secret Empire thing and I just kind of passed over it. And I was like, wait a minute, I think a gold was supposed to come out this week. And so I went back and looked and I was like, oh, no, (laughs) no, no, please, that actually, no. I mean, it sounds like that almost cost Marvel at least one sell. And I, I can't imagine you would be the only one in that situation. Hmm. Maybe not. It, it it could have happened, really. Honestly, if people are looking for a certain look in their title, so mm-hmm. exactly, yeah. If yeah. you're looking for that logo, and oh, they put the Hydra logo on top of it, so it kind of looks like that logo. I mean, if you're just glancing, unless you go to a comic shop that's as awesome as you know Nerdvana Knoxville that has a pull list, I mean, you might miss out. Yep. So very true. Well, so how? How long, like, when will the Secret Empire arc wrap up? Do we know? Is this something that's going to be ongoing indefinitely? That's that's what I was wondering. Um, I believe the Secret Empire, the main story itself, is announced issue 0 through 10. Through 10, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, we're a little over halfway halfway through with the Secret Empire. So So I I recommend you take my Castlevania strategy and read up through... (laughs) Read up through number nine and then, and then stop. stop. And then stop. <laughs> no more. I cannot yeah, believe there's only four of those. If I don't, if I don't know the ending, I can make my own. Exactly. <laughs> I cannot believe four. It's choose your own adventure, guys. I do want to update. We watched four because it only took us 20 well, minutes. Yeah, literally. That's all, that's, <laughs> that's all you have left. I figured you would have savored it. We, we did. We watched it and, like it, and it was great. <laughs> of course it was. It was the last one. <laughs> Really glad the final 25% lived up to the expectations <laughs> it really did. of the other three episodes. Yeah, since each episode's about 25 minutes, it's like every minute is 1% of the season. They're like, you know what's a good strategy? Making episodes like a dollar. <laughs> Just four of them. <laughs> yeah, and I stopped four after quarters. the third quarter. Right. Which is which would have been a good strategy for Tennessee last year at some points if we had uh, just stopped in the third uh, quarter. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> or you had another four quarters to play. <laughs> or yeah, that's, actually you're you're more right about that. We tended to do better in the fourth. So. That's right. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was more like a couple years ago. We should have stopped in the third. Yeah, quarter. I was going to say two years ago. If, if if football just had three quarters, Tennessee would have been undefeated. Maybe undefeated. National, national champions. <laughs> national <laughs> champions. Third quarter. Great, but unfortunately, they have four quarters in these damn football like, games. We've got to go back. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like, well, well, the good we're, news we're, we're we're already done. I mean, I mean, we're up. I got homework. Right? The good Wait, news. Why is Oklahoma still scoring? Yeah. yeah. Well, the good news for Castlevania was it didn't pack it up and go home after three quarters. It was. It's it was good right did, through the fourth. Did did they round you out on that fourth, or is it just kind of like and uh, and it stops? No, it concluded it enough for you for you to feel like okay, they wrapped up a few things that were um, kind of questionable, but mm-hmm. but definitely set up that there's so much more to do. Okay, so that's cool. Yeah, so so it was so you got to nice, buy the DLC. You got to buy the DLC. <laughs> it's behind a paywall. That's right. For thirty nine ninety nine, you can finish the next three episodes. Yeah. Yep, you can get the whole experience. And he gets a new costume in this one. <laughs> but it's it actually going to start New Show Plus where you, where you oh, start New Show Plus. With, with all the abilities. Landon, Landon, <laughs> shh. Netflix will hear you. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. No crap. That's yeah, all right. I need is Netflix with DLC. <laughs> I've noticed you've watched Orange is the New Black. <laughs> Would you like to see the last episode? That'll be $20. 
it. <laughs> yep, pretty much. God. You know, that's how Amazon Prime does it. They'll uh, give you the first few seasons of something. They're really? like, oh, you want to see season four and five? Pay oh, up, sucker. Yeah, pay it up. First taste is free. Push a man. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Are you hooked yet? So so it, it does. It There's already a system that works that way. Ugh. Thanks, Amazon. <laughs> Thanks, Amazon. Well, let's get back hey, to it's Netflix. Amazon though. stockholder. Thanks, Amazon. Yeah. Let's get back to Netflix, though, because, Landon, we, for, your, for your hot and streamy, I know we had kind of teased on Tuesday that we were going to talk a little bit about Glow. So yes. And you got that Glow. I think it's time to get into that. Let's talk about it. All right, let's step into the squared circle where I will give you my glow-ing review of Netflix's oh, Glow. Nice. Hey-o. Hey-o. Yeah, yeah. I teased it on Tuesday. You knew it was coming. So. <laughs> um, I really liked Glow. It's, uh, it's a 10-episode or ten episode series on Netflix. Uh, the episodes run anywhere from 30 minutes to, I believe, uh, the pilot itself is 42. So okay. it's not it, – like, like this, is, this is a show you could knock out over a weekend, which is yeah. kind of what – I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, my girlfriend a- uh, actually sat through it uh, for a second time when I watched it for the first time. So there's a little bit of uh, rewatchability to it, even huh. if you know what's happening, even if you, uh, you know, thought you saw everything. You can go back and kind of uh, kind of see some stuff you miss. And as a wrestling fan, I really loved the cameos. Like, I probably annoyed my girlfriend because every time a wrestler popped up or somebody who had something to do with wrestling, I'm like, oh, that's Johnny Mundo from Lucha Underground. Or, oh, that's – that's uh, Brodus Clay from WWE or Carlito. <laughs> and so it's like if, if you're into wrestling, you're going to see uh, some, some uh, familiar faces. One of the main characters, Awesome Kong, uh, she is a legendary female wrestler. Uh, she uh, She's in practically every episode. So if you're an Awesome Kong fan, you're going to see a ton of Kong. Uh, and, and if you're a fan of Annie's boobs, that monkey from Community, <laughs> you need to watch episode one at, at the very least because uh, Annie's boobs makes an appearance, which which I was not expecting, but it but it was not a bad surprise. I'll say that. Thank you um, so much, Troy Barnes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Remember, blame Troy because he could name that monkey whatever he wanted to. <laughs> but yeah. uh, I really liked Glow. The characters were good. Uh, um, the main characters, Allison Brie, and I forget who who was uh, the person that played opposite of her. I thought carried the show. They were believable as these characters in the '80s, tr- trying to trying to you know make it in this in this world of wrestling that they know practically nothing about. But the true star of this show is Mark Maron. Mark Maron just kills it as the promoter and director of Glow. Like just anytime he's on screen, whenever he's saying anything. I'm like, like he's like the shark in Jaws. It's like you're focused in on him and everything that he's doing. So I liked Mark Madden. Uh, I mean, obviously, like I said, I'm a wrestling fan and I, I like wrestling stuff. And this is a good wrestling story. And I would even say if, if you're not a fan of wrestling, like the girlfriend, she, she I guess, puts up with wrestling because of my <laughs> dance, but, uh, but she isn't, you know, watching Tolerance every it. Monday and Tuesday and watching the pay-per-views every two weeks like I am. Like she tolerates it. Exactly. But she, like I said, was able to watch it twice through in a relatively short amount of time. So, I mean, that should speak volumes to the quality of it. And plus, if you're a fan of Orange is the New Black, this is from the creators of Orange is the New Black. So oh, okay. it's like a handful of episodes. Uh, I like it enough, but I definitely felt like uh, if, you've, if you've watched the entire series and you have an ear to, you know, that quote unquote style, you'll hear a little bit of that in the dialogue. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, so <laughs> I wanted to to get back to Mark Marin for a second because, a, as with most things, I went into Glow knowing less than I should about it. So <laughs> all I knew was that it was about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, and Allison yeah. Brie, Brie was in it. So, and that was enough for me to be interested and give it a of try. Course it was. Yeah. So I was I was like I was like let's roll the dice. As soon as Mark Marin showed up, I did the annoying thing, and I was like, "Oh, that's Mark Marin!" Like I said, that's yeah. She she has no <laughs> idea. Me. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he. I will say he is a better known person than you would think. I think he. I think he is, especially if you're like a person that's into comedy and or podcasts. Or podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially Marin. his name Marin is synonymous. I mean, it's like if 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 you hear that Mark Marin's on a podcast, that podcast has made it. Yeah. So just I want to yeah, announce that really Mark Marin will be on. <laughs> you're right. That's right. We, we'd like to take this moment to announce that Mark Marin will be our next guest on uh, someday right. in the way long future. Um, we made it, guys. We did it. But uh, no, you were talking about um, Allison Brie and, and then her counterpart, which is her name's Betty Gilpin. She's Debbie in the there show. Um, and 
Yeah, the, I want to say in episode one, you know, it wraps up. The climax is just a just a knockdown drag out between the two of them, but for real, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's great. <laughs> in in wrestling terms, that's called a shoot. Yeah, hmm. yeah they they were going at it, and uh, it it was it was pretty intense. And I, and I do like the way they play off of each other. And um, man, we so. This was one of those that we started, and we're like, okay, we can't keep watching this until we finish other stuff, <laughs> like Castlevania and Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. We're almost done with Twin Peaks. I was about to say, Castlevania's done for. And then, yeah. And now we're trying no to finish up Twin now. Peaks. Twin Peaks! But we're going to finish it soon. But then we'll get into Glow. But uh, but yeah, so we watched the first episode. Uh, again, like I said, going in painfully underinformed because watching it <laughs> in the living room with my daughter, and all of a sudden, um, Annie's boob shows up, and I was like, "What? Well, yeah, there we are!" And uh, <laughs> that monkey comes out of nowhere. Luckily, it's you know, being a being a lady, it's not something she hadn't seen before. But right. even so, mm-hmm. awkward. Exactly. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And uh, I do want to say real quick, like the girls or excuse me, the women who star in this role that, that aren't wrestlers, especially Allison Brie, she can take a bump. Like, yeah. like she bumps like somebody who's been in the ring for years. So great job uh, to the cast. And, and I believe uh, Chavo Guerrero Jr. Uh, was their trainer on Glow. So great job to Chavo because he made these actresses look legit. Yeah, I was going to say, there, there's got to be some serious background to the training that they did to, to do this show and make it believable, mm-hmm. I would think. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, if to get the, the thumbs up from Landon, who... You know he he can tell when it's you know when it's supposed to be what it is. <laughs> that wasn't I mean, a good I suplex. I just want to throw this out there. I used to have a podcast on wrestling. So well, I'm yeah. into it. that's so, true. So it you, wasn't like watching Smoky Mountain wrestling. From wrestling. No, I'm just kidding. That's still some good wrestling. What's the guy's yeah, name that say, used to run that? Back Smoky Mountain wrestling. Okay. <laughs> What's the guy's name that used I, to run it that died? Jim Cornette. Wait, Jim Cornette isn't dead. No. What was the other? What didn't they lose somebody? Prominent. Uh, Recently, I mean, Mr. Fuji passed away. Oh yeah, Mr. Fuji. Sorry, that was that was only big because you could see him at Knox- the, you could see exactly. him at Regal Theater. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he would tear your ticket uh, at the mall. Yep. <laughs> Not because he was downtrodden, guys. Just that's what he wanted to do. <laughs> hey, you know what? He was uh, he transitioned into the civilian life. So good civilian on civilian life. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but yeah, go watch Glow. Yeah, cool. I, I agree with that. So. Um, I'll get back to it, and <laughs> and and like I said, we mentioned Tuesday. There's a documentary that's mm-hmm. come out that's like right along. That's what I want to know. I want to watch if, it too. If, uh, I'll check that out. I, I didn't know if you had gotten a chance to check that out between between shows here, but have not. But uh, I will definitely check out the documentary because I'll admit it's like I know of Glow. I know a handful of facts about the original Glow, but that is not something I've you know sat down and watched. So hmm. uh, I, I would probably even learn something off the documentary. Unfortunately, I won't be able to come and tell you, yeah, this totally tells the true story. Or, this was hacked by us. <laughs> I, I won't be able to tell you anything. <laughs> like that. Either way, yeah. either way, we're fine with it. Well, of course you're going to be fine with it. Cause I bring nothing but gold, Maddie. <laughs> gold. gold. It's gold day. I say, <laughs> well, if that's uh, if that's all we got left with the glow. Got that glow. Then I'm going to move on. Now it's time for the afterglow. Oh, it's time for an afterglow for sure. (laughs) Because I'm coming with this premium roast. And let me tell you something. The taste that's going to leave in your mouth is a bit bitter. Uh Uh-oh. I I don't know if you guys... Had to be a better way to phrase that. (laughs) Oh, oh, it's going to be nasty. (laughs) It's going to leave that grit. You're not helping. That grit. (laughs) It's a bit nutty. Um, (laughs) So I've had the opportunity... For, for, because it's being shoved down our throats right now for Jumanji 2 trailer. Usually I don't say much about a trailer, but God almighty, this trailer. What have we done? What <laughs> what monster has been unleashed to, to the world uh, that is Jumanji 2? Robin William dies and you do this. I mean, is this how you pay homage to a man? No. No. I'm not... I'm going to start with the good because I feel like the good is, is, is I'm going to, I'm going to start, you know, out positive And then, and just, there's, there's not much I can, there's not enough time on this, on this pod to say about the negative. So I'll just hit the highlights thereafter. The cast in this is a good cast. The, the, the veterans they've got are, are awesome. I, I think any other movie, it would be great. I mean, maybe a fast and the furious, you could add it half of these people, maybe all of them. 
And then the young cast they start out with, I, I, I was, you know, they seem like they do well in the trailer. And I'm like, okay, it seems to be, you know, okay. And then they work well together and you can see a little bit of chemistry, but you can throw that out the door. And I will say the jungle scene and everything, you know, the action, the CGI doesn't look like the best CGI I've seen, but it's decent. And I mean, the jungle scene looked good. You know, the things they were, they were doing in the trailer looked really great. But God Almighty, help me with this crap of a plot. <laughs> they, it is Breakfast Club, and then you throw in freaking Tron. It is like, oh, well, God's got detention. Uh, let's get us an athlete and grab a, 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 a pretty girl, and then we'll grab a, a person who's not seen this girl who's a self-conscious, and then we'll, we'll grab this nerd and we'll throw them all together. <laughs> oh, guess what? You guys are cleaning the basement where we keep all these mystical items in a high school that was probably built in 1986. Let me tell you something. If you made kids clean a basement in this day and time, you would have every parent in the county at your door <laughs> with your with your resignation in hand. He's you not made, wrong. You made my kid touch dirt. It'd be over. It would be over. <laughs> Completely. Done. Get out. You're fired. Get Out was a good movie. Sorry. Get Out was a good movie. This is not. <laughs> it doesn't even have the people from Get Out. If we could have gotten Peel to write this one, I think we could have gotten a better movie. But he's a little busy with Get Out too. He didn't quite get out. <laughs> but... No, it, they, they go in there, and this is all from the trailer. No spoilers for you guys that are going to give money to this. They pick up what looked like a, a sad love child between an Atari and a Super Nintendo, and they put it up there, and they're like, Jumanji, oh, the adventure, let's play it. I guess I'm this person, I guess I'm this person. This is terrible. And then, of course, The Rock is the first we see in the trailer, and he does the eyebrow. Don't get me wrong. I love Dwayne mm -hmm. Johnson. I'm a fan of Dwayne Johnson. But did, did the kid necessarily know to do the eyebrow? Come on. Come hey, on. I'm going to pop whenever the people's eyebrow shows up. I don't care if it's in the ring. I don't care if it's in a trailer. It's the fun. It's, 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 I mean, it's like a license plate for him. I mean, you're waiting entire movies for that eyebrow. you got to have it. I mean, it's almost like you're you're some kind of an addict, and it's like I'm Jones and man, he better do that eyebrow. I don't think I can go. I don't think I can't. No, ninety minutes, you know. So he did the eyebrow right off the bat, and then we mm -hmm. find out the pretty girl is Jack Black. You could do worse, you know. And then like the 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 big athlete is Kevin Hart. Have you seen Kevin Hart? He is j j, -j jacked. <laughs> so I mean, mm -hmm. he's like, where's the upper half of my body? Don't get me wrong, Kevin Hart is hilarious. I don't care what you put him in. A, a cab, uh, <laughs> you put him in, you know, an Old West, you put him in anything, he's hilarious. He's a funny guy. And I mean, it's a great cast, but I'm just like, really? Oh, we're in Avatar land here. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, when are we going to see, you know, the rest of Tron? Are you going to get on your light cycles and are we going to throw some Frisbees out here and, you know, <laughs> freaking Neon Doomville? It's terrible. It's a terrible concept. They could have gone way better with the board game again. I mean, anything would have been better than this trash fest. And then it's like, balls to the wall action, baby! Because we see helicopters and, you know, rhinos in a canyon. And then they're talking about, we all have special abilities. Kill me. Kill me now. I'm just like, who gives money to this? Who gives money to this? Because I would love to meet that man It was like, this is a great idea. We should definitely give him $20 million to make it. Dwayne Johnson? Hell yeah. I mean, come on. You could have made any movie with this cast. I would have made any movie with this cast. I mean, I would have taken, I don't know, taken five with Dwayne Johnson. I mean, I don't care. I would watch that. I, of course we would watch that. I've got a certain amount of skills. You better shut your mouth. I mean, that's what we would have got. It would have been great. You know? <laughs> It would have been great, but no, no. We get Jumanji to the SNES. That, that's what we have. It's it's so delightful. It makes me happy in my heart to see that money is spent well. Trash fest. That's all, that's all I Trash got on that. Fest. <laughs> you should write the you should write the tagline for Jumanji two. Jumanji two. Put your money back in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, I li I like the first draft. Jumanji two. Kill me now. <laughs> Kill me now. <laughs> Put a bullet in my head. 
I can I could see that on a on a poster. I feel like the the starting theme should be that song that uh, Adam Sandler sang in Wedding Singer to <laughs> Drew Barrymore as uh, he was auditioning for uh, the, the their wedding. I I feel like that is a that's a good it's a good start off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel sorry for the young actors. They're not going to recover from this. <laughs> this is this is it. This, for they're going to look at them and go. Were you in Jumanji too? <laughs> no. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> well, I mean, look at the original kids from the first Jumanji. Are either one of them household names? Well, that one guy's still a monkey, isn't he? <laughs> no, he got changed back from. A monkey. Oh, he did. Robin Williams recovered. No, Robin Williams never had to recover. There Robin some... Williams, right up until his death, was Robin freaking Williams. <laughs> well, of course. And I mean, we're, we were making a live action genie, too. I'm so ready for that one. Get ready for a premium roast on that. That garbage fire. <laughs> oh, which apparently they're having trouble casting the leads yeah, in the movie. Man. It's like, are you kidding me? They're I having trouble casting Aladdin. Yeah. I heard that. Oh, we can't find anybody racist enough? <laughs> well, it's funny because on Twitter today, Kumail said, what am I, a piece of meat? No crap. <laughs> come get, come at me, bro. <laughs> it's like, Psst, I'm over here. God. He could totally do it. I could see Kumail as Aladdin. That'd be awesome. That'd be, I mean, you need a snarky one, right? Mm-hmm. Come on. I don't Prince know. Ali was snarky. So that that's all I got for that garbage heap of... Of a movie, twenty million dollars. Just do you remember that part? And uh, is it Batman or The Dark Knight Rises, where he lot the Joker lots all that money on fire? Yeah, that's exactly Jumanji <laughs> too. That's the that's what the trailer should have been. He's just going, look, I made Jumanji too. <laughs> and he lights it on fire. And look, what are you doing? He goes, don't you love it? And then Dwayne Johnson's going, like yes. <laughs> Well, he loves it because he's getting paid. Absolutely. He got to take one of those stacks home before it was lit on fire. (laughs) It's like, and this is the Rock's cut. This is the Rock's (laughs) cut, and this is Jack Black's cut, which is half of the Rock's cut. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then Kevin Hart, I think, got in for free. I, I'm not really sure if he even takes well, money. Well, I mean, uh, if uh, if you're under a certain height, you do get in for free. So Kevin oh, Hart, wait for nice. Me. I'm sorry, Kevin Hart. That's not nice. He that, w- he could whip all of our butts. Oh my I gosh! I, yeah, I hope he doesn't listen all to this. At the same time, I've yeah. seen some of his training videos. That man is j- 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 jacked <laughs> for for serious. Oh yeah, I mean he's insanely built, and I mean he works out all the time. I was just looking really quick. I wanted to know if I could find the production budget for Jumanji 2. Oh, I want to you say one up? more thing. No, 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 oh, okay. no. One more thing that I happened to look in here. The the tag on it is Welcome to the Jungle. And that song is dead to me now. It is dead to me. <laughs> Axl Rose isn't even dead. And we're doing this? Who okayed this? Oh, Axl Rose did. Absolutely Axel, he did. Yeah, exactly. I hope Slash goes there and slaps the <laughs> bandana off his bald ass head. Terrible. Would, uh, would, would it be before or after he slaps the bucket off of Buckethead? Because <laughs> remember, we, know, we live in a world where Buckethead oh, is a thing. Karen Gillian, that's who I was trying yeah. to think of the whole time. I'm like, I feel sorry Nebula. for her, too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or Nebula, or Amy Pond, if you're oh, a Doctor I Who know. fan. So Nebula. <laughs> yeah, look, no! <clears throat> it's, if, if you want to look in memoriam, just go ahead and go to IMDb and look at the cast. Uh, and the <laughs> angel for all their careers for this, <laughs> this terrible movie. But you know what? There's no ghosts in it, so China's going to keep it alive. Nope. We'll get Jumanji 3, still lighting it up, baby. And they're smoking like big 100s in a big roll and a rubber band. Terrible. I cannot find the production budget. Because they can't tell you. They don't want to do this to you. I can tell you the budget for the original Jumanji was $65 million. And so I'm imagining this is twice that. Oh, are you kidding? That I don't think that would even pay for the Rock to show up. Box Office Mojo doesn't have it. Which what's the surprising. one I, by the numbers? The, is the one it's I the usually... numbers? Yeah, and I looked at that and they didn't have it yet either. So. Oh, so they haven't released it. They're, they're ashamed. Well, it says on this. <laughs> it says on Wikipedia sixty five million, but that that's was, for the first. That's one. That's the first one. Yeah, it didn't have it in there. Yeah. Nothing at kinda, all. Kind of surprising, but like uh, I think Matt made a reference. They might be embarrassed. <laughs> they don't want to tell us. They're going to make it up anyway. I'm thinking it was at least 150 million. It has to be. I'm going to say your guess is good on that. that. That's probably within the realm. But but I don't know how much they probably don't release it until they're done with the marketing, wouldn't you think? Maybe that's true. Oh yeah, you're right cuz they're probably still spending that money. Oh, yeah, it was filmed like, in Honolulu. I would have been on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want a free trip to Hawaii? Yeah. Well, 
all all those people we mentioned, because that's a big name cast. They can all afford oh, yeah. a trip to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you might want to do that before you show up. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, Regal has started selling beer at most of their prominent uh, of their uh, v- venues, so uh, they know what's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good on Regal. Uh, uh, though I do want to say my new local chain out here, NCG, amazing seats, like recliner-esque things. Nice. Every seat, no beer. What the hell? Dude, I guess it's airplane bottles and talk up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it's <laughs> almost like they're, they're telling me I have to sneak in booze. <laughs> like, I didn't want to. They told me I had to. <laughs> what, you expect me to sit through a movie sober? What type of communist country is this? Awful. You can ask Cap. That's the kind of communist country oh. this is. Oh, yeah. Mm. The one that Cap is leading us into. That's right. With the Punisher at his side. Yep. Yep. So that brings us to our debate. And as the temperature is hot, as I mentioned, a lot of you are getting out, seeing the sights, and taking a little bit of a R&R at either one of two places. And that's a water park or a theme park. So this week's debate is, and we're going to try something a little different this time. We're we're, we're always evolving, always changing, and forgetting what we did in previous episodes. So (laughs) as we go forward, uh, always forward, never backwards, um, we're going to kind of crossfire this one up for you guys, and uh, we're going to say, you know, what uh, water park or, or theme park this summer, with the heat, you know, in the indexes of, please don't melt my shorts off, it's embarrassing, what uh? What are you guys thinking? So, um, I want to say w- this particular crossfire debate was inspired by the fact that my family went to Dollywood's mm-hmm. Splash Country this past weekend, <laughs> and it reminded me of while I enjoy water parks, I have uh, a good time. It reminded me of all the reasons that I kind of think they're a little bit gross too. <laughs> and <laughs> well, if you think about them for one moment, it's awful. Yeah. Mm-hmm, you can't yep. think about it. You can't. I just got water in my mouth from oh, something. Oh, God, no. <laughs> when, okay, when you walk in and they have a giant sign that says, please don't swim if you have diarrhea, <laughs> uh, that, that's just a giant <laughs> reminder that probably everybody in the wave pool has diarrhea. And the kid in front of you keeps pulling at his back of his shorts and is like, oh, my God, he's got diarrhea. And you look everybody. for the kids, it's like, you've got diarrhea. You've they got all do. Uh, they and all they're do. all, every kid's peeing in the pool. Every kid's drinking down that chlorine piss-filled water. When you're floating you're in, in that. La- you're, in, you're in the lazy river and like 50% of the time it's a Hershey. Uh, uh, Hershey <laughs> highway. <laughs> it's exactly, yeah, it's I was like going to. Yeah, that's It's exactly, a baby I Ruth was, root. I was going <laughs> to. Yeah. yeah. I was going to tie it to the the whole, like, it's like you might as well be floating down the sewer. Um, you know. <laughs> Ninja Turtle style tubular. But <laughs> there are some really cool things about water parks. Like, you know, the raft rides are cool. Yeah. They've they've introduced the uh, some of these parks now, and, and Splash Country is one of them, have introduced these water coasters. Mm-hmm. And um, that's a fun new thing to do at a water park that so I've never, crap yourself d- in never a seat. done before. <laughs> it was fun. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, you know... As as we continue to get better technology, like Volcano Bay doing the queueless kind mm-hmm. of approach, and as they as they perfect that, one of my big complaints about Splash Country was that we waited in a couple lines that were way too long. Yeah. for a freaking slide. I mean, just start pushing people down. It's water. You won't die. <laughs> and yeah. if you do, I mean, you're going to float up. I mean, yeah. we're going to find you. So so like <laughs> they, you know, if we could eliminate lines, that would be great. You know, and of course, hot days, it's nice to beat the heat. The lazy rivers are, if you don't think about it, the lazy rivers are really <laughs> nice and relaxing. You know, you're floating in a raft. Um, it's it's cool. It's calm. You know, um, sitting by the wave pool is nice. Getting in there, floating around, and, you know, playing bumper boats with all the other idiots that are <laughs> that have decided to make that bad choice. Um, and I like water slides. I have a good time on water slides. So th- I think there's positive to it, but, I mean, I, I don't think – that I even have to say that my preference between the two is theme parks. I'm a roller coaster guy, start to finish. And yeah, but didn't you say the pavement? Like, I mean, like some of those lines are really hot too. I mean, I'm not gonna like melt your tinnies on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I guess for me, um, you, I, I guess the technology for the longer or the big enclosed queues are there now too. Whereas you were a kid, you're like, yeah, sweating into the oldies out there. Yeah, and. If you're if you're in a longer line, you know you unless you're in a line where they force you to use a locker that you have to pay for. Um, 
uh, you might have your phone, so that can be a nice distraction. You yeah. know, you get to do do that while you wait. Um, you're not standing there shoeless and, plus, and the, shirtless. In, in the queue at like you know Universal or Disney or something, the queue is going to be interactive. Yeah, you're, like like if if you're if you're in Harry Potter world and you're standing in line, you're like oh cool, this mirror talks to me and it says lines from the Harry Potter movie. Right. So there Where's might be cool things step? to see and cool things to interact with in the line. I'm, you don't really get that in water parks. I, I like water parks. I don't know why. I feel like I'm 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 more inclined to wait in a line shoeless and shirtless mm-hmm. than I am standing there in, in, in whatever shirt I chose that day that is now drenched in my own fluids, uh, mm, yep. thinking about how much I hate the person three spots in front of me because they're, yeah, 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 and the whole time and letting at least 60 people gap between them. I, I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. And I mean, though I do when I'm walking up like the stairs to you know the climb the Tower of Power on most of these water slides. Tower of Power, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> you gotta wonder if it's water you're stepping in or piss every yeah. time. <laughs> it's like it's one of those things. The more you think about it, the less you really want to be thinking about it. Yeah, it's like I'm walking up this, and that puddle was awful warm. And the sun isn't on this part of the stairs. <laughs> I'm just going to keep walking and, and keep hitting more puddles that are cooler because I know that's probably chlorinated water. <laughs> so I was actually saying um, while we were at Splash Country, we went on <laughs> one of the slides, one of the newer ones, and it's totally built out of like the, the stairs, the little tower that you have to climb up is built out of concrete and steel, mm-hmm. which to me is a lot more... I don't know. It, it's easier for my mind to deal with than like old wet wood walking up mm-hmm. a, a tower like that. And I was like, "Oh, this is nice." It was the first one we did, and I was like, "This is nice. It's nice that Splash Country has like these these concrete and steel towers because that old nasty wet wood gets really gross under your feet when you're waiting in, for these slides." Well, like half of their slides are like that. The other, <laughs> the other half are wooden. Are wooden. So, so spoke too soon. Yeah, there was some wood to knock on for that though. They're, they're not not at the time I said it. Go ahead and put your hand in that wet puddle and give it a little knock knock. Yeah, so it'll be fine. You'll be, be fine. It's ammonia, you know. <laughs> and for me, here's here's another positive in the theme park category. Um, since I am a vampire and I burst into flame in the sun. <laughs> Um, I'm a lot more covered up when I'm at a theme true, park. True, true, very true, very true. Even though I still get I want to say the concessions probably at a theme park are way better than a water park, because water park is like, what can we slide down you before you go down that slide? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that's and probably plus, true in general. I would, th- and I and would you, think. You do have to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you. I'm done. I was, was going to say, <laughs> and you do have to wait 30 minutes after eating before you can get on a water slide, so, you know. False. That's science. <laughs> You're supposed to. You're supposed to. Yeah. People. Well, uh, I guess if I'm weighing in, this is going to be super quick. I have bad ears. I can't go underwater. <laughs> therefore, theme parks win hands See, down. Well, yeah, you should be throwing the pros out there left and right with theme parks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got roller coasters. I don't think I have to say more. See, and we like to go to Kentucky Splash, mm-hmm. which is you know reminiscent of what we used to have down below us in Pigeon Forge, which was Ogles Water mm-hmm. Park. Ogles Water Park. Oh yep. my gosh. I mean, if if you've ever been to Pigeon Forge during that timeline when it was there, you know what Ogles Water Park was. It mm-hmm. was it was fun. It had a lot of fun things, and I think Kentucky Splash bought all their slides because oh, it right. seems <laughs> almost the same place, and more or less. So you know, and we we were talking about it the other day, and I don't remember if it was you all or somebody else that was talking about like wave pools. I mean, you can't have water. You can't have a water park without a wave pool. It, it's got to be a law. It's like a bylaw. It's like, mm-hmm. you're building a water park, eh? Got a wave pool? No, we were kind of got. nope, you're going to have yeah, a wave you, pool. No, you, have <laughs> you don't have one now. <laughs> you have to, yeah. yeah. It's almost like a code requirement. Yeah. You need it's handrails cool. and wave pools. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. And either. you need to hire lifeguards that don't necessarily pay attention to people drowning as much as they pay attention to kids doing things they shouldn't. Yep. <laughs> exactly. I personally, um, wave pools are fine. I don't really... I don't. I don't. I guess I don't get it. That I much. feel like I feel like insects in a coke. Because once it gets full up, you're just kind of like bumping into everybody, and everybody's just looking at everybody like who's going to go down first. You know who's going to make that move. You know, <laughs> and you know how you get it's like a, a bunch moment. of insects and and like you've mm-hmm. left a coke out all day, and you look down, ooh, that's gross, and you kind of throw them out. That's kind of like what it feels like. I'm going to be pushed out to the edge at some point in time. Yeah, because they get so full. Well, this is probably getting back to my whole like. 
if I see more than a handful of kids in any kind of a body of water, I'm automatically thinking that is all pee. That's that, yep. that diarrhea and pee. Yeah. Yep. So so the, way, the ratio of clean water has went way down. So floating in the pool, I don't care how much chemical you put in that, I'm still swimming. In you pee. can't shock it enough to me for me to it's like step a toe. So that's it's that's, like that's the episode of South Park. Just. <laughs> Nothing. Or if you see a kid in a pool, no, they peed in it. Yep, exactly. Every single kid. So I that's just what I'm thinking. I guess I'm just a grosser person because I could give two shits about it. Well, I mean, they I'm, give two shits. In the, oh, they do. And I'm just like, well, <laughs> I'm going to get in with this tube. I don't see brown, so no code brown. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, that's the point you have to break out the hazmat suits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, I point and go, uh, until somebody knows. Judy! <laughs> yeah. And you, you are an a-hole if you bring a case of, of baby roofs for your kids at, at the water park. You are an a-hole. That or you just appreciate finer comedy. <laughs> yeah, you do. They serve, um, like, pulled pork nachos at Splash Country. Nice. And I was just thinking, is that... <laughs> what influences diarrhea more? <laughs> yeah. Is, is that the smartest thing to be feeding people? Seriously, well, it's like, I love pulled pork, I love nachos, I love pulled pork nachos. Not necessarily in a water park, though. Yeah. Well, I can't say anything. I mean, usually isn't the water more at a theme park than the Cokes? Well, yeah. I mean, it's expensive. It's like yeah, two, that's what I'm saying. Two, three, what two, Im- two tree bucks a bottle. What involves heat stroke more than soda? <laughs> so <laughs> they're not doing a much better game for themselves. It's like, oh, 95 degrees. Want a cherry coke? No, I, I, that water. Well, that'll be sixteen fifty. I'll have the cherry coke. Two fifty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here, stroke. Here I come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need more positives on the water park side. What can we say about water parks? It's fun. I feel like the it's lines fun. are quicker. It's fun. It's fun. If you don't think about the gross, it's fun, <laughs> and you stay cool the whole time. Okay. I was yeah. gonna say that's that's my one pro. And and yeah. for you, you know, lobster boy mm-hmm. is. You're more likely to put sunscreen on at the water park than you are at the theme park. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you. I know that you probably, they just dump a bucket in the shower for you, and you just get yourself coated, <laughs> and then you go out. Oh, that is freaking brilliant. Why do they not have sunscreen showers at water parks? That's pretty cool. Just a freaking... Because people open their mouths. <laughs> well... <laughs> And then they'll have to put on a sign, don't Don't drink open your mouth. Don't well. drink the sunscreen. Like, Dummy. I... You know, if it were me... And I could pay for like, let's say it was like five bucks, and for the whole day you get access to the sunscreen shower. Yeah, you go in, you get sprayed as just like as if you know, like a like, like a tan. Yeah, get spray tan. Yeah, just like getting spray tan because I need it in my scalp, all oh, in yeah. my hair. So I need it all over. And you go in, you get sprayed, you rub it in. It, I would, I would so prefer that rather than carrying it. You pay hair. for that locker. I'd do it. Yeah, I'd do it. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea. Million dollar idea. Let me let me push this forward. Nickelodeon builds a water park and they have slime time and it's just sunscreen. Yeah. You get in there and, it's, and it just goops you down and you're just like, rub me down and you, you know, just get in there. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. It's slime really not time. that bad. I yep. like it. And you're most you're you're slime more time. Li- <laughs> slime time. Slime time. <laughs> you're more likely not to open your mouth when slime time happens than you do with the no, sunscreen people shower. People wouldn't taste yes, it. they will. I know. Especially they if will. it's green. Idiots. Like, yeah, Ooh, what does yeah. what slime taste like? What's this taste like? It tastes like you're going to the infirmary. That's what it tastes like. <laughs> if it's green and you call it slime, kids are going to line up like they're turkeys outside when it's raining. Just just mouths agape to take I it I don't know what them. you would call it then. They won't get sunburnt on the inside. There you go, yeah. Uh, <laughs> call it ass water gel. I don't ass know what would stop them from eating go. it. <laughs> Nickelodeon's oh. ass water gel. <laughs> it's broccoli gel. Here you go, guys. The, the trope of kids not eating broccoli. Broccoli gel. Yeah. Both my kids well, eat broccoli, though. Well, I'm out at that, so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not eating broccoli. All right. Gross. So there's there's your debate. I think we've... I don't know. Yeah. You guys didn't really have to give much of the theme park positives, because... <laughs> We all know. We all know what's yeah. there. We all know. They got what's roller up. coasters, y'all. They do have roller coasters, so you get that fifteen seconds of, of air time to cool you off. And plus, like eighty five percent of them, they sell churros and churros. <laughs> churros. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's your glowing review of uh, the food there, churros. <laughs> <laughs> and giant Can't, turkey legs. And ch- exactly. now, let me tell you something. I don't know if this qualifies, but I am a fair person, and that doesn't mean that I see the world as equals. I'm I was talking about to say. Well, fest- we know you don't. You're not- <laughs> no, I am not fair. I am. I am. The, I am the monarchy of things sometimes. But I am talking. 
If the fair's in town, mm-hmm. I love, love fair food. Oh my god, I love fair food. It probably is made in the dirtiest of greasy things mm-hmm. with the dirtiest of hands that health code wouldn't even give a a, a, a number over zero. <laughs> but I love it. I love the turkey, the barbecue, the 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 hot dogs, the brats, the cotton candy, the funnel cakes. This is just one hour for me. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then I want to wash it down with a fresh lemonade. So I don't know if that counts, but I would definitely well, we, go to the fair. Okay. I mean, it's kind of in the theme park realm. It's just so, a movie. And that's theme hot park. when we go. I mean, even though it's September here when that comes, it's hot. It is hot, yeah. Mm-hmm, very hot. So I, I, I have to give positives. If you put it in a fair environment, which Dollywood used to be that way, they are no longer that way. They sold their soul. I hope you're happy, Dolly. <laughs> yeah, she seems like a generally happy Yeah, she is. She's taking care of Severe County. I mean, those the, the, that terrible wildfire, she is just pouring mm-hmm. money on those people, she really and is. she's doing... She's doing. She's the best. She is. I can't say anything. We're I, proud of Dolly. If she, sold, if she sold the park for that, I'm... I have no qualms. Even if she did, I still don't have any qualms. What am I saying? <laughs> I have nothing negative to say about that woman. All right. There's so nothing negative to say about that woman. Exactly. We are going to put the poll out this week. And if you would like to vote, you should. And you should also retweet. Mm-hmm. And if you're a follower of us, you can have a chance. You will have a chance to win a free digital comic to be determined later. T B D. Um <laughs> And you have to do everything Jay just mentioned. For example, I had somebody who gave me a verbal vote in our poll this past week. Uh, oh do you gosh. believe Nintendo is going to follow through with what they said about putting out more SNES classics? Resoundingly, no. Our, our listeners agree with us. They do not think it's going to yeah. happen. But this listener said, no, now give me stuff. That does not that count. Doesn't that, work. Is, that, is, that is not how any of this works. That's, so. No, no, no. I, I, I will resonate that same, same thing that Landon just said. My friends who see me, you cannot verbally tell me things. If you mm-hmm. want to express an opinion, we have a comment section. We have a Twitter. We even have YouTube if you really want to put it on something that more or less we'll have to go find. So, <laughs> And we have an email if it's really long. Mm-hmm. Put it on there. Yeah. Put it on there. So, so if you want to get your voice heard on the Twitter, that's at nerd underscore news underscore cafe. Landon just referenced last week our poll was, did yes. you believe Nintendo will avoid the NES Classic style supply demand issue when they release the SNES Classic? 76% of you said no chance. 24% yep. said sure. We should have had an underlying, sure. are they going to have <laughs> patina? <laughs> patina SNES. So, uh, so yeah, wait, not a lot of faith in, in the Nintendo uh, supply. No. We're well aware of Nintendo and their production type work. <laughs> Yeah. They can't get those slay those little sweatshop hands working fast enough. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm back. <laughs> that is Matt Weaver, everybody. <laughs> hey, you don't know what they do over there. No, they We've probably working conditions. They probably have fair China. They have fair working conditions. Send us stuff. And you know, um, if this was any other company other than Nintendo, like they wouldn't be able to get away with this crap. But because it's no, Nintendo, it's Nintendo. We're like, Okay, I mean, we're going to get a Mario well, eventually, so... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're used to disappoint, d- disappointing people when it comes to Nintendo, I and mean, that's what they do best. I mean, it, <laughs> I'm not saying they're a bad company, I'm just saying that they can't meet demands on what people want, and they release games willy-nilly, so, I mean, you're just kind of like, I hope it happens. But I'm not going to lie, the suspense they build with stuff, I feel is better than what we get with other platforms. Just going to put that out there. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Well, we're all in suspense as to how this week's <laughs> poll is going to turn out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's going to be, do you prefer the theme park or water park? If you go out and vote and you retweet and you're a follower, you'll have a chance to win comics. Let us take a look at who retweeted last week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We don't have a huge uh, amount of people that did it, so everybody's got a good chance to win. A one uh, in six chance, if you will. I wasn't going to say that because I just I feel, I feel sad that... Out of all the, we had 29 votes and only six people retweeted. It's just missing an opportunity for free stuff, people. Well, your percentages are up, so sucks to be you if you didn't do yeah, that. Exactly. I mean, we're we're trying to give you stuff, people. We're doing it for we're you. Literally handing it to you. <laughs> so let's let us go to ye old uh, Google <laughs> number generator. Ye old. The ye old Google. Let us roll the dice. Okay. Random number generator time. Give me a drum roll, Matt. 
And the winner this week is... Zergs. <laughs> oh, one. Are you stroking out on me? Zergs. <laughs> He, uh, guys, a, we may have a problem in his being recorded. His avatar is yeah. a cat in a top hat. So, well, we that, should have given like, it to him for that alone. Yeah. I mean, or his or her. It could <laughs> be his or her. her. Sorry, could be a her. I did not mean to assume. It's a baseball fan. Um, I still do not mean to assume. Could, still could be a lady. Um, so, congratulations, <laughs> Zergzo One. Um, you are a winner, and we didn't even pick what comic you're going to get. So. How about I give you uh, Deadpool kill, kills the Marvel nice. Universe number one? Wow, that's that's, that's wow. And and you know what, guys? That's what we're talking about. That's the kind of stuff that's you can win if you retweet, follow. Did I say we tweet? I thought you said retreat. I don't. Re- if you retreat, retweet, <laughs> and follow, and then you know, vote in the poll, guys, yeah. because we're just handing it to you. Free stuff. Like, for example, next week we will be giving away a digital code for Secret Empire number four. So you could you could get in on what uh, people are calling a, quote, interesting story. <laughs> Critics agree. <laughs> interesting. USA Today says it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if they actually said that or not. <laughs> and it's I cannot n- confirm nor deny. It is not... <laughs> At least it is not the dumpster fire that Matt believes Jumanji 2 will be. Oh, my God. Dumpster, you know, I feel like dumpster fire does not equate what that is. It just doesn't. Yeah. Well. I you feel do like, know that movie comes out in, like, December, so you might want to pace yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be no. a flamethrower for oh my four God. months about I this I literally movie. want to just, I, I want to start a campaign to not have it release. <laughs> They've already just, paid the actors. Just, just cancel the whole <laughs> Who thing. Who do you think you are, North Korea? Come on. Hey, you never know what I can do. I mean, that man has ruled over and 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 kept people under the, the umbrella of stupidity for how long? I well, think you I can get Jumanji too. Matt Weaver's going to hack Sony, so <laughs> <laughs> like you have to try. Anyway, <laughs> so like we said, Twitter nerd underscore news underscore cafe. You can hit us up on our Facebook page and let us know how you feel. Do not vote there. Go where you're supposed to, guys. I will say this. If you say, I do not like Twitter, I am against it, I will Jumanji myself into a pit of despair, please put my comment and vote out there. I will do that for you if you put it in those words. <laughs> and Yeah, you have to say exactly that. <laughs> that exactly. You have to say, I will Jumanji welcome to the jungle myself right now. If you don't put my comments out there in my vote. So I will, I will do that for you. I will do that for you. So, uh, yeah. So hit us up. Uh, we got a Gmail, nerdnewscafe at gmail.com. You can hit us up on YouTube. We are on there's Nerd News Cafe. It's not hard to find. I think we're the only one on that one. Um, does that about cover us? The website. Oh, the website, guys. God, nerdnewscafe.com. If you haven't been on there, we got reviews. We got our ugly faces on there. You know, faces fit for podcasting. Um, you know, a little bit about us, uh, episode list, uh, recipes for uh, cooking a G.I. Joe through and through. Um, <laughs> that was a fun piece of research. It was. It was a DIY on building your own Christmas tree. Um, we've got some <laughs> stuff on there. and None of that's true, except you know, we do have stuff on there. So, guys, go check it out. We're always changing it. We're always throwing stuff up there. You guys oh, and got speaking it. of movie reviews, I finally got around to seeing uh, Lego Batman. That is a fun ass movie, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's fun. It's, I never said it wasn't fun. It's a you could watch it again, and there's more jokes in it you're missing because I guarantee while you're laughing, you're missing more. Well, and it's like I, I watched. Uh, I knew I knew a bunch of famous people voiced uh, voiced some of the bigger players in this movie, but at the end of it, I was like, "Wow, Doug Benson was Bane." Yeah. So now I'm gonna yeah. go back and watch. And watch it again. Just imagine who Bane was, yes, being high was. as shit. Who yeah. was Killer Croc? It seemed like he was somebody prominent, too. I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I, all I remember Killer Croc saying is, I did it! <laughs> every every <laughs> villain stuff. every villain was voiced by somebody you would probably know. Do you know how long it took me to figure Galifianakis was the Joker? Joker yeah. It was forever. Even after he said it's worth a Google, I was like, oh, okay, that's funny. He took that from Galifianakis' movie. <laughs> so... So, guys, I guess uh, that's all we got to say about that. Remember, vote, retweet, all that good stuff. Let us know, hey, let us know if you got any comments, thoughts, problems. Remember, complaints go to Atlandaws. 
um, on Twitter. Dongs. That's right. He's ready. Uh, you guys got any plugs? Uh, Jay, you want to get in here? I would just like to plug uh, theme parks over water parks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all. All right. Well, then, uh, twitter.com slash Landoz, L-A-N-D-O-Z. Do want to give a shout out to my buddy, Will Rab. Follow him uh, mm-hmm. at Rab Sports, R-A-B-B Sports. He debuted his new show this week on WCDT Sports. It's called Off the Bench. It airs uh, 1 to 3 Eastern time every Tuesday and Thursday. And somebody you might know who is speaking right now is going to be having a weekly segment on that show. So you'll be able to uh, stream that live at WCDTSports.com. So check it out. Congratulations, Matt. I didn't know you had a spot on a radio show. Well, you know, I've been very involved with the Vols for a very long time. Um, They keep throwing me out of the stadium, and I feel like that gives me a very prominent review of the program. (laughs) (laughs) Of of, of at least the security, right? At least the security and how they handle perpetrators who boo everyone. No, but that's cool. That's cool. Uh, Go go out and listen to Landon uh, and his good buddy, Will Rabb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we talk most sports stuff, but me being the giant man baby dork that I am, I have to throw <laughs> nerd references in every now and then. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a moral imperative. Exactly. It's in the name of the podcast for crying out loud. There you go. All right, get us out of here. Oh, yeah, that's my part. So for <laughs> Matt Weaver and Justin Kritzinger, I am Landon Doe. Thank you for joining us on another edition of Nerd News Cafe Stir It Up. We've been Nerd News. You've been great. Good night. Good night. <laughs>